Hey there, happy day 760. La 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 la. One of what she up to now. She, Sharon Horn Elstrom, documenting the journey as I transition from the brick and mortar world of real businesses, lots of different businesses, and corporate America to the online world of business. Spent over a quarter century in corporate America uh, as a business executive working for some of the biggest companies in the world. It's really funny to look back now and think, oh my God, I've worked for some of the biggest companies in the world. It's amazing to think back and, and look at that, uh, where I learned incredible lessons, incredible things. And on the side, while I was doing that, I had a bunch of different businesses, all kinds of different businesses, until the early 2000s when I left corporate America, once and for all, and just ran my own businesses. And then I just added more and more businesses to the mix. I um, was raising my family, crazy, crazy time. and. Threw out a lot of life events, got divorced, separated, sold the businesses, and found myself in a position to do what I want. Do what I want, when I want, where I want, with whoever I want, wearing what I want, right? How cool is that? And I had always been excited and intrigued by the whole internet world, right? When the internet came online, I remember staying up all night on the internet because I love learning and I love information and, and I couldn't get enough of it. And I'd have to go to work like, why did I wide-eyed nothing teary-eyed and tired but I would do it again a couple days later I'd be doing the same thing I'd be like oh my god this is incredible we have access at our fingertips to so much information and so many things and then over the years as I was running businesses I dip my toe in different things and try different things but really never could go jump in all the way so um, as part of my divorce separating assets I decided I am going to explore this I'm gonna figure out and see how this online thing works and part of that and part of the coaching I received was hey you need to document your journey you need to do Facebook lives which terrified me and share with people how you're doing what's working what's not working and hopefully shortcut and prevent them some of the challenges and the errors that you've made as you're building your business and I like to think that this little piece does that some days yes some days no some days I'm just rambling other days yeah I got something to say and it's a lesson so today I was talking about supersize your business obviously not my early morning videos which I generally do uh, I've had a bunch of running around a bunch of meetings and a bunch of things to do a bunch of legal things to do today um, and things to take care of plus I wanted to go to Sam's Club and get some fresh fruits and vegetables right sometimes you just gotta stock up on the yummy stuff so out and about until now and I could finally get to my videos uh -huh. so today's super size your business was all about the salt of the earth and people who are the salt of the earth hopefully we each have people that we can look up to that we consider the salt of the earth usually in every industry that I've ever worked in and there's been like 27 different industries I find who are the leaders and the people with the values that I can really relate to in that industry and that's who I am attracted to that's who I'm drawn to and I think we all tend to do that we tend to be attracted to people that have values that are consistent with our values now some people might not like to know that they might not want to hear it because they like to hang around with hoodlums and gangsters and liars and cheats but you gotta ask yourself if I'm hanging around hoodlums and gangsters and liars and cheats why am I hanging around them right so if that's an in-your-face, okay, maybe got to look in the mirror kind of moment, well, then it just is what it is. Some people, that's that's the route they choose to take in life. More power to you. We're each here to experience our life as we uniquely and only can, right? And some of us will create amazing, good, phenomenal things in our lives. Others of us will just create pretty much nothing. And some of us will create havoc and drama and trauma and harm and hurt and evil for other people. It's, it's just inherent in the diversity that exists in our universe and in our world and on the planet and, and in our lives, right? So salt of the earth. Hopefully you know of, or know of a couple of people that you would consider salt of the earth. You know, we think of Gandhi, we think of Mother Teresa, we think of, you know, a whole list of other people depending on what and who you've been exposed to that you consider just amazing, admirable, noble, some of the finest people on the planet, right? Or some of the finest people or the finest person that's ever lived. So maybe that's a good question for the comments below. Who do you think is the finest person either that you know right now or the finest person that has ever lived? I think one of the finest people I've ever known was my dad. And one of the finest people that I've ever known is, uh, 
is my my grandma my mom's mom she recently passed away last fall she's one of the finest kindest most noble amazing Christian just lovely women on the absolute planet did anybody know her for the most part outside of our family no she was almost a hundred she was just shy of 100 when she passed away last year and she wasn't really well known I mean everybody she knew had already passed away all of her friends were gone all of her family was gone except for her generations and, and there were a lot of us there were um, I don't remember how many of us but there's hundreds of people that have come from that lineage um, because of this amazing woman and of course my grandpa but I think you get what I mean she is just the epitome of the salt of the earth and she's not you know Mahatma Gandhi famous or um, Oprah Winfrey famous she's not famous to anyone except for those that know her and her life she's touched but she was a prime example of the salt of the earth and someone that I would aspire to be even one fifth as kind or loving and amazing as she was so share in the comments below do you know somebody have you ever known somebody that you would say hey the person is just the salt of the earth or uh, I asked on my super site your business page is there a company or a business or a brand that you look up to because you think they're the salt of the earth you respect what they're doing you just have so much admiration for it you'll go out of your way to do business with them because you believe in what they stand for and what they represent and how they treat people the whole nine yards that would be a salt of the earth brand or company so thinking about salt of the earth and I will admit I am not always salt of the earth right sometimes I can be just plain a pain in the rear um, most of us human beings can't I mean people don't always see us at our finest we all strive to be good human beings at least I like to think we do not not everybody I suppose some people don't care for the most part I try to be decent and kind and loving but I you know I get in bad moods and grumpy too who doesn't right some people do I try to stick on my own when I'm when I'm in one of those moods I try to get more sleep and just stay away from other people so that they, they think I'm the salt of the earth, right? And some people we will be the salt of the earth too. And some people, no matter what, if we were to walk on water, they would still think that we suck. It's just the way it is. And guess what? They get to. We all get our opinion. We're all entitled to our opinion. We're not entitled to make other people agree with us and agree with our opinion, but we are all entitled to our own opinion. So salt of the earth. Challenge-wise, um... Yesterday was a big day for other projects and business. I did not work very hard on my upcoming challenge, March 23rd, the live challenge workshop. <laughs> I will work on it some more this afternoon. Working on the workbook for that. Uh, I'm not working hard on it. I'm just trying to pare it down and make it a much more manageable piece of information. I tend to throw way too much stuff and way too much information at people, and that is overwhelming. And I know I don't like to be overwhelmed, so I suspect other people don't like to be overwhelmed as well. So I'm pulling out and paring that down. Today I will do day four and day five of uh, Michelle Virag is an amazing young woman that teaches people about content and branding. She's doing a five-day challenge about called content crushers and she's got a spy theme and prizes and points and it's really a fun challenge so I'm actually going through her challenge yesterday was day four but she posts some late in the afternoon so I had a bunch of stuff going on last night and I did not get to it but I'll do it before today's challenge and then I'll do them both today I normally don't like to get behind in people's challenges but guess what I'm human I get it we get behind sometimes we have other priorities that take precedence over doing a challenge the trick is with challenges is to make a commitment to yourself and then do what you say you're gonna do so I said I was gonna do it I've been uh, pretty much keeping up listening to the videos doing the homework and today I actually started listening to yesterday's which is all about um, content tools and content creation tools um, some of which I've never heard of which is always exciting when I join a challenge and I get information and I learn about things that I've never learned about before I don't know about you but I love not necessarily following shiny objects I did a couple of years of that as you may well know if you've listened to this piece at all uh, and I find it super frustrating and so I am on a straight and narrow path to move toward my goals not everybody else's goals and sometimes in the online world I have learned that everybody else's goals are to sell you their project their program their system their now it's gonna be the mastermind thing because Tony Robbins and Dean Graciosi and Jenna Kutcher and Russell Brunson all came out with their 1997 KBB package so now everybody on the planet's gonna be doing masterminds right for a while it was webinars and courses and workshops and events and speaking and high ticket it's it's always gonna be something so you have to pick what resonates with you what's right with for you and who you want to serve and, and just do that pick that and be the best you can be at that right 
Um, so doing that. Uh, also, one funnel away challenge. I believe it's week two, day five. Um, kind of coasting along with that again, um, taking a few people through. I've got that pretty much automated, so people go through mine uh, sort of on their own, but I'm here to coach and help if they need it or have questions. Uh, otherwise, I am getting forward and looking forward to a nice weekend. I can use a little weekend time to declutter, demystify, um, organize some things, and just work on the, the upcoming challenge launch. It's going to be fun. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, what I want to do with it. Do I want a theme? Mm, yeah, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Uh, I do have, with my Supersize Your Business page and group, a theme. I have a scavenger hunt theme, which is really, really fun for me. My granddaughter's four, and she's into treasure hunting right now. We have watched the treasure hunting puppy Barbie movie, I think about eight times. I'm not sure I can watch it again. <laughs> I did get her to watch National Treasure once, so that was good. I'll have to get her to watch National Treasure 2 now, just so we get a little more variety. But she's very into treasure maps and treasure hunting now. So uh, maybe we'll do a treasure hunting theme or something. I'll have to think on it, because it might be fun. And I'm all about fun this year. One of the 365 day challenges I'm doing this year is all about doing one fun thing every day, because I'm not so fun anymore. Thus, the Tierra, right? That was for my fun challenge for today was, hey, people say you can't do something. You can do whatever you want. You can show up on your Facebook Lives in a Tierra if you want. You can do whatever you want. And guess what? Some people will love you. Some people will hate you. It just doesn't matter, right? It doesn't matter. Uh, what other people think of me is none of my business. One of my favorite sayings. So that's all I've got today. I'm going to go out and do some fun things. Um, oh, challenges, other challenges. No sugar challenge, still going strong with that. I don't even know what day I'm on. Um, five, six, seven, maybe day 10 today. It might be day 10 today, yay. I can have a cookie tomorrow if I want. Um, heck, I might already be done and I could have a cookie today if I want, but I'm, I'm not going to. So doing the no sugar challenge where I just, I did a five day challenge and I just kind of extended it for another five days only because I just kind of wanted to reset my own personal body clock and my own physical habits with respect to consuming sugar. One thing I've discovered about hanging out with a four-year-old, number one, you need a lot more energy. Number two, it's easy to just automatically grab a bite of or eat what the kids are eating. And a four-year-old can consume very different things than a 59-year-old. Just saying. So that, and I'm also doing a, I call it the fast 16, where you eat for eight-hour block during the day and then the other 16 hours you don't eat. Just heard about it. I have not done any research on it. Zero. Like, I haven't even Googled it. Uh, I'm just going based on some information from my youngest sister's daughter. I'm happy with the results. And my, uh, one of her friends is doing it. has been even happier with, not, as weight, not necessarily weight loss, but just with what it's doing with her numbers of blood sugar and things. And as we get older, we're more apt to be prone to diabetes and things like that. And I want to make sure I don't get those things. And we know, since I did a 90-day blood pressure challenge last year, the end of last year, that my blood pressure can be a little bit off the charts. So eating this way is supposed to be good for your di diabetes prevention as well as for blood pressure. So I'm all, I'm all in to try it for a while. If I like it, I'll keep doing it. If I don't, guess what? I'll do something different. All right. If I can help you in any way, shape, or form, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I'll be back tomorrow just spouting off what I'm doing, what I'm working on, what's working, what's not working, why I'm doing it. Uh, I guess I really haven't talked about much of, a little bit about why I'm doing the live challenge workshop. Uh, I can talk about that a little bit more. If you're interested, hit me up in the comments below. Otherwise, I will see you tomorrow. Have an absolutely amazing day. Bye. Go have some fun.